Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we are doing Big Little Lies. Now, this episode was crazy. I'm going to start off with George and Anthesa because last time I did not do them. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know how there was some type of crazy oversight, but I did a live last night that was kind of crazy where I live. It's a bunch of trees and things. And I know sometimes when I live stream, there's like a hard time seeing me or my, like my connection because of where I'm at. So usually I do not go live. But I did it last night because I wanted to go ahead and get them kind of like out of the way from last episode that I did for the review. But pretty much in that episode, um, George lies to Anthesa and tells her that he never went to go see a divorce attorney, even though we know that he did. Um, so in this episode, we're catching up with them. They're home. George comes in. Anthesa is pissed and rightfully so. Um, when you want to work out a relationship and you decide that you want to like put everything on the table, that means put everything on the table. And George decided he did not want to let her know that him and his sister went to go see a divorce attorney and she had to learn it through the producers. So after he finally decides that he wants to tell the truth and he wants to let Anthesa know that he did go see the divorce attorney and he was mad at her and they were going through whatever they were going through, he finally decides to offer up a solution and he says, do you think therapy worked? And she's like, kind of, not really. And he's like, well, I think we should go see a therapist individually. So they do that. And for the first time in a really long time where I don't blame both of them, and I'm kind of solely looking at George, and Thesa brings up a really good point that I, don't, I didn't ever realize myself. George will blackmail her when she wants to leave. And he did just that at the tell-all. And she lets the therapist know that she's afraid to leave George because he always threatens that if she leaves, he's going to, like, drag her name through the mud. And we watched him do that at the tell-all. And we listened to him say he lied about everything at the tell-all. And he was just mad at Anthesa. And so when... People call her controlling now. I kind of have to take a step back because we don't really get to see it all on TV. A lot of things are left on the cutting floor and a lot of things are probably not even taped. And we don't know what's going on between text messages and emails because TLC does not have access to that. George has threatened her before. It's almost like blackmail. If you leave me, I'm going to do this, this, and this. George has all the control of the money. He has the control of the car. Before Anthesa got her green card and could actually go to school and could drive and could make her own money, George had all the control. So when she's lashing out, we're looking at her a certain type of way, but we really don't know the whole story. So she lets the therapist know that she's afraid to leave George because she doesn't know what he's going to do. She watched him tear her apart at the tell-all in her face and then probably turned around and watched this and watched the tell-all all over again and then she's seen it all over again. So, and Thesis is afraid to leave George and I feel really, really bad for her because I we've seen what George is capable of when he's hurt and he's angry. And so if Anthesa truly is unhappy and she cannot leave because of that, then that's a problem with George. And so... Hopefully, we can figure that out. We basically leave Anthesa at the therapist's office saying that she thinks that her and George should separate, but she's afraid to leave. And that's the last scene that we see with George and Anthesa. And I just feel really bad about her. And I wanted to start off with her because I feel bad for her. I don't know. I think they're still together. I see them on Instagram every now and again. But now it makes me think if they're really together because Anthesa wants to be there or she's there because she's afraid if she leaves, George could try to destroy her image, what we watched him do before. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys to mull on and make your own conclusion with Anthesa. But I am not Team George or Anthesa. However, I do feel bad for Anthesa because I think George is taking advantage of this whole him being an American thing and her not. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to as in, in Nicole. So Nicole gets to Morocco. I just knew she was not going to be in this episode. I thought we wasn't going to see her until next episode. But we got to see her. She lands in Morocco. And Azin is doing his interview, and he says he didn't think that Nicole was going to find out that he did those things. And I'm just looking at Azin like, I already really don't trust you, Azin. It's a lot of, like, red flags going up. However, I don't think enough people put enough blame on Nicole. So, in my head, I blame them both, honestly. So, he says that it was just a joke. He got drunk. He didn't think Nicole would ever uh, find out about the vid, like about the recordings and the voicemails, but she did, and he thinks it's funny, and he's laughing, and I'm just like, as in, like, why did you bring this child all the way over here to Morocco? Like, why did you bring her over here? You don't really want to be with her. I don't believe you love her. I think that you 
are going to live off of her savings and after that i don't know i don't know if he's going to stay i don't know why he's even really marrying her and then there's also a small part of me that was looking at nicole when she's talking to him and she's just like as in you know why would you do it and he's like it was just a joke and she's like well i didn't think it was funny do you think i'm like do you think that i thought it was funny and he's like no i didn't think you thought it was funny but i mean i didn't think you would find out about it <laughs> And I'm just like, God damn, as in, as in this, just, he just doesn't care. And he starts saying, you can have the code to my phone. You already have it. You can, you know, see my phone and go through my phone. Um, you know, the night that she got there, before they had that little meeting, she wanted to stay in the room with him. And as in keeps telling her, I think Nicole's just disrespectful in general anyway. As in keeps telling her, there's no public affection in his culture um, if you're not married, not that you can never do it, just not if you're not married, can't sleep in the same room, things like that. And I think Nicole is trying, but, you know, she wants to do what she wants to do. She breaks the rules and she wants him to break the rules. And when he doesn't, she throws a fit and it's it's old. You get over it after a while. So they finally have this conversation. She tells as that he can never do it again. He starts trying to like tell her, go through my phone. You can see I don't do things like that. It was just a drunken night. Um, we got the phone numbers off of the internet from women that was like sending us messages and we finally called. You know, it was just a joke to him. And so she's like, I've done things and now he's done things and he's forgiven me and we've moved past it. So hopefully we can do this. I just want Azen to never do this again. And he brings up the fact that he didn't get his citizenship. And that he still wants to marry her. And now they're there. And they're just going to have to be together and work it out. And she has to just forget about it. And I don't care, honestly. I think Nicole's going to get really, really hurt. I think Azen has an ulterior motive. I don't even think Azen went to try to take his visa. I think this was the overall plan was to get Nicole to move to Morocco. She kept saying it the last time she was there that if he doesn't get his visa, she would move there. And I think he wanted it that way anyway because he really doesn't want to deal with Nicole's family and things like that. So she would have to live in his world for a year. I don't know if I really trust Azin or anything that he's doing. It's really, really suspicious and kind of messed up. So that's where we leave Azin and Nicole. Um, Pedro and Pau. Let's, let's know. I'm sorry. Russ and Pau. Pedro and Pau. Uh, Russ and Powell, they're still in Colombia. Um, it's the morning after, and she lets Russ know how disappointed she is. She's disappointed that he started that fight, and Russ just doesn't see how he was wrong. And that's kind of disappointing me because normally Russ can see where he goes wrong in things, but he doesn't see how he provoked Juan by telling him that he needed to like remain calm and do it for Powell or whatever. Like it provoked him and it created a reaction. So he doesn't understand that they're sitting in bed and she's being honest. She's like, I don't want to have to choose between you and my best friend. That's my best friend. And Russ is like, I don't understand why we have to hang with him. I don't understand why we have to do. And so, you know, I think he's being selfish but I also think Juan's a dick. So it's kind of like a catch-22 here. It, may, it just may be best for them not to all be in the same room at the same time ever again in order for her to keep both relationships. <clears throat> to keep both relationships. The guys are clearly too immature to be around each other for more than two minutes without creating some type of drama for her. So I think it's just probably best to keep them separate. The next scene that we see with Russ and Powell they are at lunch or brunch, maybe. It was kind of dark. So she meets up with an old photographer friend of hers who started taking her pictures when she was young. And he wanted to catch up with her while she was still in Colombia because he had a really cool idea to do a calendar. And he wanted her to be a part of the calendar. And the catch to the calendar was it was body paint. They were going to paint on her uh, shirt. So she'd have been naked all through, no bra, and it was going to paint over her with some really cool paint. And it was going to be a really tasteful and classy um, video, you know, photo shoot for this calendar for Columbia. And Powell's face lights all the way up. You can tell that she loves to model, and this is something that is a passion of hers. But Russ is so conservative in that Oklahoma in him. He cannot seem to get through his head that his wife enjoys being sexy and showing a little bit of skin. She's not trying to be slutty or trashy, but she feels 
her sexiest when she's able to model and be free and not have to worry about what his thoughts and opinions are. So Russ, of course, is like, I'm not comfortable with that. I don't like that. Da, 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 da. And he throws this fit, like, and she's like, you just need to calm down. You have to trust me. I want you to, like, the, the photographer invites him to come out. And so Russ is like, she's really pushing it. And I hate that he says that. Because at the end of the day, she was pow before she was Russ's wife. And you have to allow her to still be herself and be your wife. And you have to adjust yourself to those things. Because when she was in Oklahoma, you wanted her to adjust herself to Oklahoma. And you guys have to find some middle ground. And I think Russ refuses to do that. He wants her to model, but it's almost like he wants her to model with like a turtleneck on. And it's crazy. So... We move on to the day of the photo shoot after he agrees to let her do it, which I hate that it's even like that. And she invites Juan because she's not ready to lose her friendship with her best friend, which I can completely understand. And there they make a little bit of amends. He explains that he was provoked and she explains to him that he has to learn how to behave. And she says, but I can see that you guys can't do that. So I think it's just best to not have you both in the same room at the same time you know, until we can figure out a way to handle this. And they're sitting and they're talking and they're reminiscing. Well, maybe not reminiscing, but they're just talking about the photo shoot and she tells him that it's body paint and he's super happy. But of course, in Juan's interviews, he makes little slick comments about how Russ is going to like throw a fit and things like that. And he just wants Powell to be happy. And I think he believes in his heart that she's not happy with Russ. And sometimes... As I watch it now, I can see where she could possibly not be happy with Russ because when Russ has attitudes about her picture taking in her career, he kind of is holding her back by not allowing her to do what she needs to do in order to work. As Russ, um, so Russ and his uh, parents in laws, because it's uh, Powell's mom and dad, the in laws, they text and say that they're on their way. And as they're walking in, Juan's walking out because he does not want to deal with Russ so he walks up like the good little boy that he pretends to be and he hugs mom and dad and Russ is like as I watch them embrace I can tell that they don't know that Juan's a bad person and Juan as the parents walk away and he walks past Russ he makes like this little snarky <laughs> like I'm still here I don't know if you're going to be here but I'm still here and he says, when I'm in front of the parents, I have to let them know that I'm the good guy. And, I mean, Juan's a jerk, honestly. He's a class A asshole. And I don't like it because Powell sees it, but the friendship means way more to her than him being an asshole. So it's like she, at some point, even if as best friends, you guys have to separate in a way. But I think she really, like what she's not realizing is those two are never going to be able to be in the same room together. And I think she's holding out hope and she's going to have to choose sooner or later. She's just prolonging um, a relationship ending one way or another. So we get there and we're getting her makeup finished off and mom and dad is, her mom and dad is there. And Russ is like, you know, are you guys okay with her taking these pictures? And her dad was like, yeah, it's art. It's artistic. You know, she has to be able to express herself. This is her art. And Russ is like, well, I don't support it. And I was just like, fucking Russ. Like, we just can't win for losing with him. Like, Russ just does not seem to understand that this is her job. This is her career. And you have to let her work. So it comes time to paint her body. And um, Russ lets us know that he doesn't understand how her family can be okay with her taking pictures like this. And um, he needed to be there to assure that everything was covered up. Because... He didn't want the world seeing her like that because that's his wife. And I was just thinking to myself, you met her like that. So now you don't want her to continue to be who she is. So they paint her. She looks beautiful. I'm going to try to find those specific pictures so that I can insert them in here to you for you guys if you did not see them. She looks absolutely beautiful. I think she did an amazing job. But Russ is complaining and uncomfortable the entire time. And I think it was tastefully done. And I mean, if she was but naked, I can understand his problem and his beef, but it was definitely something artistic. Body art is beautiful, and Russ just needs to go ahead and get over whatever this insecure crap is that he has going on because it's not like Powell has ever cheated on him or is cheating on him or even made him feel... I mean, if she's cheating on him with anybody, it's Juan, her gay best friend. Like I think that's as deep as it goes. So I think she did a great job. Um, they finally finished up the photo shoot, 
after Russ sits and complains the entire time that she was taking the pictures. But you can see how happy she was and how comfortable she was. And I just think she did a good job. And, I mean, Russ got through it without jumping in front of her and, like, holding his arms out, telling them to stop. So I think, good job, Russ, for not completely ruining the entire thing. But he sat with her mother and father and complained the whole time. She got through it. He got through it. Um, that was that. That was the end of that one for them. She finished up her photo shoot, and she made up with Juan for now. So we're going to go ahead and go to Chantel and Pedro, simply because I want to leave Molly and Louise for um, the ending of this. So Chantel is decided that she wants to um, go with her family to check out this investigation thing. And she goes because she doesn't want her parents to go overboard. When she gets there, she's under the assumption that they're only going to be investigating the mother and the sister of Pedro. But reality was they're going to be investigating Pedro, the sister, and the mother. Chantel was not aware that they were trying to do that. So as they're having this conversation with the investigator, she lets them know that they want to track Pedro's money. They want to track Pedro to make sure he's not cheating. And Chantel's like, he's not cheating. They're like, well, he could have another family over in the DR. And that's why he's sending all this money back and just all of this stuff. And she starts to feel ambushed because they start questioning her and trying to get her to see that Pedro could be more than what she's willing to believe. Now, she goes home after she gets up and she walks out and tells her family she's not going to investigate him and she doesn't want them to investigate him. And if she, if they do, Pedro's never going to forgive any of them, including her. So, a couple of days go by, it seems like, and she finally sits down and she tells Pedro after coming home from school that they did go to talk to someone. And she lets them, you know, she lets him know that she's telling him because she wants him to be open and honest with her. Now, what I see Chantel trying to do is if she can be, if she continues to be open and honest with Pedro, then maybe Pedro will be open and honest with her about his family. So the tactic is let me do as I say, like, let me do as I say. I want honesty and openness about your family and you and what you have going on. So I'm going to give you that. Pedro could give a shit less though. Like that's the like that's the real problem with this. Pedro does not plan on ever probably really being honest with Chantel. And that makes me nervous for her because he hides a lot of information about his sister and his mother and the money and the reasons why he sends back so much. He hides it. And so that makes me nervous for her. And no matter what she does, you know, he still does what he wants. So in the next scene, we're getting ready to pick up Chantel um, and Pedro's sister. Well, Chantel's sister-in-law, Pedro's sister. Now, she tells Pedro that she just wants to make peace. She doesn't want any problems, you know. And if she can make peace with his family, maybe one day he'll do the same and make peace with hers. So it's the morning of picking her up from the airport. And... Chantel built out a balloon and some really, really pretty flowers. And so she was really trying to put her best foot forward. They get to the airport. They pick the sister up. And Chantel takes a deep breath. She gets out the car. She says, hey, sister-in-law. And the girl is like, Pedro's sister is really, really happy. She's like, she's learning. She's learning. Like, that makes me happy. And so they driving in the car. She says thank you to Chantel for the flowers and the balloons. Pedro had nothing to do with that. And they get back to the apartment and they sit